Hey everyone, I'm Rather Incoherent. By the point this video airs, rotation will be upon us. It'll be happening probably within less than 24 hours of this video going live, and I reviewed all the classes at this point, but I haven't covered the neutral cards, what's changing with the core, and what's coming with Festival of Legends. So in this video, I will go through the, frankly, mostly pack filler that is the neutral minions coming with Festival of Legends. We've got the Air Guitarist, it's a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, give your weapon plus 1 durability. This isn't really a thing that any archetype needs in the current standard format. There are no new weapons that really want this either, because almost all of them are death rattle effects. So making your weapon last longer isn't actually very helpful for that. The one exception there being the Blood Death Knight weapon, which improves when your health changes, which happens when you hit a minion. So Air Guitarist is better with that one, but Blood Death Knights aren't really hurting for one drops. So that's not really their jam. It's also just a terrible minion if you aren't getting its value, right? Like this is Snow Flipper Penguin for one if the weapon's not out. Annoying Fan is funny. It's a one mana, one two mech, battle cry, choose a minion that can't attack while this is alive. I don't see that being remotely useful. Anoyotron is fundamentally much stronger. This just gets killed by a different minion and then it's gone. And unlike Anoyotron, if you want to remove this from hand with a spell, it doesn't require you to get rid of the Divine Shield. This is just not really important. It's not a thing that mech decks are looking for. It's not a strong enough card on its own. I don't think this will see any play. Crowd Surfer is a full on meme because of this any in bold right here. It can affect your opponent's minions. So this is just randomly bouncing around a buff for the rest of the game. This can be good if you, for instance, are making a tournament deck and you know that you're playing something specifically against control decks where they won't have minions for this to get targeted. Like this can be in a counter deck in a tournament, but it cannot be in a standard meta deck on the ladder where you don't know what you'll be up against. Frequency Oscillator is actually good. Unlike the ones we've been talking about so far, it's a one mana two one mech. With Battlecry, the next mech you play costs one less. It's no mech warper, but it's a one drop and it has a good effect that cheats out mana that's always fantastic. Essentially, this is a zero mana 2-1, but honestly, it's better than that, and it's very, very good. If mech decks are seeing play, this will be seeing play. Now, Audio Amplifier is a river croc, but it's okay because on turn 11, it does something. Yeah, this card's not going to see play. I know that someone's going to make a combo deck that requires 11 mana. I'm aware of the Enza Jive Insect criminal lineup combination where you transform one minion into rag and then one rag into three rags and that's neat but also control shaman's not a thing and generally the answer to is this 11 mana super specific combo going to be worth it the answer is what deck are you playing that's alive and able to win on turn 11 what game are you playing your deck has to be functional way before turn 11 and putting riverfin crocolisk in your deck is going to make it a lot less functional before turn 11. Automatic's fine, it's a 2 mana 2 3 rush with finale gain lifesteal, which when played on curve means it has lifesteal. I mean, speaking of Riverfin Crocolisk, eat your heart out, the beast tag is a lot worse than rush plus lifesteal. This is just like a really good minion, but also for arena. In constructed, why on earth would you need your 2 drop to do this? In arena, it helps you deal with 1 drops, it helps you deal with weaker 2 drops. In constructed, Play a real two drop. What are we talking about? Cult Neophytes in the core set. Why are you running this? Hipsters old two mana one three. Battle cry. Discover a spell from your opponent's class that isn't in their deck. So it's like discover a spell from your opponent's class, but almost objectively worse because there's a lot of good ones that you're not allowed to get. I wouldn't recommend Hipster. Now, instrument deck is actually playable if there was a deck that really cared about drawing a specific weapon. That's a big if. Um, Doomhammer and Shaman stands out, but Rockbiter weapon just rotated. So these are terrible stats. The weapon has to be good enough for you to justify running this. This card can definitely see play. Whenever I do these reviews, I'm always talking about the current expansion, the meta as we understand it at this exact moment, which is why cards like the new Warrior Weapon get rated poorly because there are no control decks that use them. Instrument tech is probably not good right now, but it's one of those cards that stands to get a lot better with time. Party Animal is just great. If Menagerie is a real archetype that you're actually playing, Party Animal is one of the reasons to do it. It's a two mana, two, three. It gives plus one, plus one to every minion type in your hand. That's just incredible. That's so much value, realistically. That's gonna be, this is like one of the best hand buff cards there's ever been. Not that Menagerie or hand buff have ever really been dominant playstyles, but Party Animal is a good card. But uh, it's not a good enough card to make you play the archetype, and the archetype doesn't have any other good cards. 
like right now, Menagerie Warrior, which is about the only thing the devs seem interested in supporting for Warrior, is legitimately Party Animal, Drowning Chorus, and 26 other bad cards. But theoretically, if the deck's ever good, Party Animal will be part of that. But for now, the deck's bad, so Party Animal's bad. Rolling Stone's a great name, and it also, like, gets a good Curve Stone card. It's going to be great in Arena. But 2-mana 3-3 Rush without conditions would probably not see play in Constructed. So this won't see play in Constructed. Stereo Totem is one of those cards where I really want it to be good, and then I try to make a Totem Shaman deck, and I'm like, wow, that's not even the 34th card in the deck. I've got so much other stuff to run before you. Maybe I'm underestimating the value of Handbuck. Maybe give a random minion in your hand, plus two, plus two guaranteed is good, but I think there's not enough totem synergy to justify running a 2-mana 0-3 that does stuff later. The Cowbell Soloist is a 3-mana 4-2 with Battle Cry. If you control no other minions, deal 2 damage. And Classic Hearthstone, this card costs 6 mana. Uh, do I have any feelings about this card at all? Well, if it was actually just, I believe it's called Stormpike Commander from Classic, if it were that card, just outright, if it didn't have the additional text, if it didn't have if you control no other minions, this card would actually be pretty good. But it does have that text, so it's just garbage, right? Because the deck that would want 3 mana 4 2 deal 2 damage is an aggro deck, which this can't be in because you can't have board for this, so. <sighs> it's fine. It's maybe even a little bit good. But even legitimately good cards don't get played. Remember, I just said that a three, I just said that a two mana three three with rush wouldn't get played. This is nowhere near getting played. This isn't good as two mana three three rush. It's funny power creep. I like the card in lots of humorous ways. I enjoy this hypocritical flavor text as they provide more cowbell, not less, despite claiming the meme is overdone. That's pretty funny, but it's not good. Festival Security is a card that's got me really conflicted, because I think a lot of people seriously underrate this card. It's a 3-mana 2-5 taunt, which is just fine stats. A lot of people have said Finale Force All Any Minions to attack this is just what taunt does. That is comically disingenuous, and if you believe that sincerely, then you don't know how to play aggro decks. Because because here's what happens, for instance, if a Frost Death Knight were to run into a 3-mana 2 by, they trade in one minion and Frost Strike it. Every aggro deck does something like that. None of them just lose their whole board to the first taunt minion that comes down. That's not the plan. The deck is built to avoid exactly that. They are aware that taunts exist, and then they plan around their they plan around that when they make their deck. So this finale definitely does do something. There are a lot of board states where an aggro deck can easily deal with a 2-5, but they cannot easily deal with all of their minions taking two damage. Saying that this is just a 3-mana 2-5 is like saying Silverbark Patriarch is half of a Consecrate because one is half of two. That's how disingenuous it is. Now, I'm super conflicted about the card because even though I think it's severely underrated and it actually does do stuff, and it is legitimately a good card, it is nowhere near good enough to see play. Like, all of this talk to get to, it's still bad though. Like, competitively, it's not good enough, which means it's bad. If it will never see play, there's no difference in Festival Security and Snow Flipper Penguin. I really like Metronome. I'm not convinced it's remotely good. I hope it is. I love the card. 3 mana, 2, 4 mech. The mech tag is not going to matter if you're playing this. After you play a 1 cost card, draw a 2 cost card, then increase. So it becomes, after you play a 2 cost card, draw a 3 cost card, and then it increases. So the most theoretical draw you can get is 3 mana for the gnome, 1 for the first spell, 2 for the second spell, and then 3 for the third spell. That'll be 9 mana and it will have drawn you three cards. And then if you play it on curve, like, it's okay, it's a three mana, two, four, that's what Vizier does. For this to fit into a deck, though, you have to have a lot of one drops, and you need a decent number of two drops, right? Like, if you're playing this, you need to be able to immediately play a one cost card afterwards pretty much every time, and you really want to be able to, like, continue on into a two cost card. You don't want to be in one of those decks with three or four cards at the two drop, and you just don't have any, so it breaks and breaks the chain after one. I don't think it's going to see play, but I do think it's going to see experimentation, and I do think that even though it's not quite good enough for competitive, it's a really cool card. Outfit Taylor's a 3-mana 2-2 that gives a friendly minion its stats, so I guess this is better Shattered Sun Cleric for what it's worth. Like, 3 attack is definitely worth less than the plus 1 plus 1 buff, and it benefits from hand buffs. I mean, this is never going in a deck in modern Hearthstone, right? Like, Power Creeping a classic card 
that was barely even played once we got to Nox Rambus is uh, not much. It doesn't really do anything. So Outfit Taylor, it's just an arena card. It doesn't matter. Three mana Paparazzi, Battlecry, Discover a Legendary Minion. Like, this is obviously not going to see play competitively. I really like that this card exists, though. This is a really cool card for new players. Spider Tank is fine. Staff Song Curve. Discover a Legendary Minion lets them play with a lot of cards they might not own. And it lets them, like, actually express skill and learn about the game by figuring out which ones are best for different situations. I think Paparazzi is a really good card to have in the game. It just doesn't matter to me as a competitive player at all. Photographer Fizzle is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three that takes a snapshot of your current hand and shuffles it into your deck. And the snapshot, by the way, is a 2-mana spell that adds all the cards that were in your hand back to your hands. Photographer Fizzle is a value card that is insanely too much value in almost every circumstance. However, this is also a card that in conjunction with Zola Gorgon means that you literally cannot enter Fatigue. You snapshot your hand and you Zola the Fizzle. You have invested no cards, but you've shuffled a card into your deck that contains a Zola, and the Fizzle is both on your board and in your hand. So you can do that, which will remove the concept of fatigue from your deck, if for some reason that's the thing you want to invest the card slots to do. And I think that as a concept's really neat. I think the existence of like high draw value decks that just want to grind their opponents out, that is actually greatly benefited by something like Fizzle Snapshot. So. I think this will actually see small but niche competitive play. I don't think it's great, but I absolutely think it will find some very minor homes over the next few years. We've got Rowdy Fan, one of the few quill boards in the game, 3 mana 1-5, Battlecry, choose a minion, and has plus 4 attack while this is alive. Now a lot of the time, that's just forever, because very frequently you're going to give them plus 4 attack and then they're going to die immediately, right? They're going to attack something with it die, and the plus 4 attack has been cashed in and good already. There's also a lot of times where you give plus 4 attack to something, and removing a 1-5 is just isn't easy. Like, if you play this on curve, most people can't deal with a 4-5, or sorry, a 1-5 very easily. I think this is legitimately an okay card. I don't think it will see play. It's surprisingly close to being playable. I think if this had 2-5 attack, it would be getting a lot of experimentation. But at only 1-5 and with no buff cards really being viable, no one's running a Defender of Argus, no one's buffing up that 1-5 to matter. It's not there, but it is one of the better cards that won't see competitive play. We have the Static Waveform, a 3-mana 5-6, but at the start of both players' turns, it's going to lose one attack or health chosen randomly. So by the time it gets to attack for you, it will usually be a 4-5. Your opponent can ignore it and it'll burn itself out over the next three turns, dealing less and less damage with every passing turn. This is like an okay arena card. It's definitely not a constructed card. No one's running that. For three mana, we've got Worgen Rody. He's a, he's a three four, he's spider tank, except this time he's wolf person. And he's got battle cry, summon a zero three instrument case for your opponent, break it for a random weapon. The exclamation mark sound makes it sound really hyped. Like, yeah, could be anything. It could even be, uh, well, it can't be fiery war axe, that rotated. It could be a uh, woodcutter's axe. It could be doom hammer. But let's be real here, this card's just trash. Like in Arena, it's okay. <laughs> in Constructed, this is irrelevant. Candle Razor is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three Divine Shield with Finale give adjacent minions Divine Shield. Gonna be real, I've kind of been sleeping on this card, it looks a little bit gross. Looks a little bit strong. I think Finale is very easy to trigger. I'm of the opinion that if you're thinking Finale is gonna be hard to trigger, you're really misevaluating how the game of Curve Stone is played, I think you can probably trigger Finale on basically every single card it's on pretty much every single turn of the game. It does not seem hard to engineer whatsoever. The only thing you ever have to worry about with Finale is in a late game situation where you're trying to trigger multiple Finales at once and obviously you can't, but that's fairly niche and fundamentally not that big of a problem. If four drops get more awkward on turn nine, that's par for the course, right? They're not going to be as good in the late game. But Candle Razor is potentially a 3-3 Divine Shield with Battlecry give adjacent minions Divine Shield. That's a lot of stickiness. That is actually potentially very, very good. I'm gonna say this is the best card that's not gonna see competitive play yet. This is gonna be quite good. If you're a new player who just started and you have these and you put them in your deck and you're a tempo deck that actually has stuff on board to give these Divine Shields to, this card will not be the worst card in your deck. But it also won't stay in your deck as you get a larger collection, it's just not quite good enough. Cover Artist is our new copy of Faceless Manipulator. 
Four mana 3-3, three, three, this is going to copy itself into a 3-3 three, three version of the minion as opposed to the original stats. It's fine. If that's an effect you need, then this is probably better because it's cheaper. But I don't think this is an effect that saw much play previously, nor do I think it's an effect that we'll see much play now. ETC Band Manager is one of my favorite cards in the game. I don't care if Vicious Syndicate is very clear about its win rate being negative in every single matchup and every single deck getting worse as you run this card in it. I'm on full steam copium. Obviously, this is just a tremendous card for skill expression, and only the best players in the world are improving their win rate with it, so of course it's bringing the stats down when you go by the masses. But, but real talk, even if it makes all of your deck worse, the level of personal expression that the sideboard gives, the level of choice it gives you in your deck is something that really appeals to me. Even if it's a net very minor negative in the decks I put it in, I'm going to keep putting ETC in my decks because I absolutely love this card. It's not that bad if it's bad, and I really, really want to believe it's just sick. I want this card to be ubiquitous over the next two years. I want it to be in everything because I love using it and I love seeing how other people are using it. Oh man, I really did not dwell too much on Freebird during the Rogue video, because Rogue has so many different miracle builds in this expansion, it's wild. <laughs> but Freebird is a 4 mana 2-2 two -two beast with charge. The important part is Battlecry, gain plus one, plus one for each other Freebird you played this game. Rogue has five copies of Shadow Step right now. They have Shadow Step, Shadow Step, Breakdance, Breakdance, Bounce Arounds. That's actually only seven Freebirds. Eight, because you can bounce around two Freebirds at once, which is a fun sentence. Well, not really, right? Because you would play Freebird, Freebird, and that would be eight of 11 mana. So no, you couldn't get up to eight. It would be seven. So the seventh one is King Crush for four. And that's not that bad. Where it gets a little bit gross, though, is when you look at the possibility of breakdance on the later wins, when it's charging for like six, six, and you breakdance it back and you keep the body after hitting the face. I don't think, free, I hope, I hope, and that's kind of blinding me, but I hope and I do not think that Freebird is going to be the best version of Miracle Rogue. I really think that Freebird being the best version of Miracle Rogue would be pretty degenerate. However, there are probably more ways to bounce than I'm thinking of. You can probably commit harder, but then your deck gets jankier in other ways. I think Freebird's going to be the weakest of the Miracle Rogue decks, but it's also a cool meme, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it shakes out. It's definitely competitively playable, I just think Miracle Rogue has better decks. Merch Seller is a really cool concept for a card, 4 mana 3, 5 Naga. At the end of your turn, put a random spell on the top of your opponent's deck. So presumably a random spell is worse than whatever they would draw normally. And if you're not going to fatigue, and spoilers, you are not going to fatigue, then that actually just made their deck worse. You just made their draw inferior to what it otherwise would have been, so Merch Seller is actually getting you a really weird but meaningful sort of value. Anyway, I'm not putting Merch Seller in my deck because the moment that they top deck a random card that I gave to them and it clears my board, I'm going to have a meltdown. I'm not emotionally ready for that. And also, it's a 4 mana 3 5, which isn't good enough. Its effect isn't meaningful enough. It's disruption, but it's not actually permanent disruption. It's only temporary, which is much less valuable. I don't think Merch Seller is going to see you play. But I cannot play the card personally. It will break my heart. We have the Obsessive Fan, it's a 4 mana 2-6, Battlecry choose a minion, it has stealth while this is alive. As cool as that effect is, um, why? <laughs> like, that's my whole opinion, what am I doing with this? Why'd I do this? What's this in my deck for? And I don't have a single answer to that question, so I don't think this will see any play. Oh baby, it's Dr. Four. do not believe the haters, this card is nuts. Posic Audio Engineer, 4 mana, 5-4. Battle cry, add two 3-3 three, three bots to your opponent's hand, a death rattle, summon them for yourself. So, the 3-3 three, three bots, for the record, are audio bots, they cost 3 mana. Have you ever been playing against a undead mage, or not So, have you ever been playing against undead priest, or unholy death knight, or frost death knight, or whatever your least favorite aggro deck is, and thought, wow, if only I had 6 mana to play out two vanilla 3-3s. Three, no, you've never thought that. Second question, how many vanilla 3-3s three that do nothing have you played ever? If you play POSIC Audio Engineer and your opponent plays the audio bot and you lose the game, it's cause you were already losing before POSIC came down. Like they should not have time to do that unless your curve leading into POSIC was just garbage. POSIC Audio Engineer is an incredibly, incredibly strong tempo card. 
It is the nail in the coffin of any good curve against a deck that's struggling with you because they can't deal with it. It just hits them for five. And if they deal with it, they hit the three threes into the board on your side. If they play an audio bot, cool. What are you doing with the one mana that actually does stuff this turn? This card is so strong as like a capstone carve in a very low curve aggressive deck. This is going to fit very nicely into stuff like Undead Priest, like the tempo versions of the Overheal Priest. I can imagine Unholy or even Frost running this and getting away with it. It's a very scary card. I'm looking forward to seeing where it finds homes, and I'm not looking forward to having to play this stupid audio bot. Otherwise, I just make the problem works when I kill Posic. At four mana, we've got the Pyrotechnician. It's a 2-5. After you cast a spell, add a random fire spell to your hand. Next. Like, honestly, I don't even have it in me to hate that card. It's just so irrelevant to Constructed. And five mana, though, we have the Ghost Rider, and this is a much more interesting card. It's a 4-4 four, four undead with Battlecry, Discover a Spell, Finale, Discover another. Now, five mana, 4-4, four, four, Discover two spells is actually playable. Not just like it might get experimented with, not just, oh, it's good for Arena, but it won't see playing Constructed. This will see experimentation. Ghost Rider might find a home somewhere. Personally, I don't think so. I think one of the most natural places for this would have been Frost Death Knight, which doesn't have any five drops, but its curve does continue well past four. And Death Knight has a very good pool of spells to be discovering. But even in Death Knight, you're pulling from a pool of 27 spells. A five mana 4-4 four, four is quite slow in an aggressive deck. Value decks don't exist. So this has to be a slow card in an aggressive deck. And it's very conflicted in that way. I don't think Ghost Rider's going to see play. I do think it will see experimentation. And I don't think it'll be actively bad if it does get played in those experiments. I think it's almost competitively viable. I think if this were a 5-5, this would actually be like maybe even a dominant card in the meta, but at 4-4, it's just too weak. It's just getting traded by school teacher. There are too many pieces of removal that easily deal with it. It doesn't threaten enough damage. At 4-4, it's just barely too small. If this were 4-5, if this were 5-5, maybe it would see competitive play. But as it is, I think it'll just see a brief period of experimentation after the expansion hits and then we'll never see him again. 5 mana, 4, 6, it's Tony, King of Piracy. Both players' decks are swapped. That is an aura effect. It is active as long as Tony is alive. And finale, draw a card from your opponent's deck, because it's yours now. So there's the obvious thing where you play the Jailer, you destroy your deck, you play Tony, you take their deck. Tony's invincible now, so they can't get it back. But if your game plan is, in fact, to make the game unwinnable for your opponent because you use the Jailer with a neat combo, the best deck at drawing that is Warlock, and Warlock has Mulganus, which makes you literally unkillable instead of just negating fatigue. So there's actually just straight up not a reason to use Tony, because the one thing he does is directly outclassed by Mulganus rotating back in. Next year, if Mulganus rotates back out, then maybe Tony sees some play if the Jailer combo stuff turns out to be good, which still remains to be seen. I could be overhyping it. I could be wrong about that. Personally, I have no hype for Tony, and I don't see where he's going to be played ever. So I look forward to opening him as my first golden legendary. Next, we have the unpopular has been a six mana five five undead with a death rattle, summon a random five cost minion from the past. Is Karen still in the core set? One second. I, I don't even know. Yeah, Karen is over here. He's in the core set. No one's playing him. Like a five five is about as good as a random five drop. Probably better, right? Because all the battle cry cards. That card's terrible. This card is completely unplayable. Next, the one amalgam band. I believe this is actually your last neutral minion. Oh no, we actually do have stuff above it. I'm completely wrong. Well, oh, that shows how highly I think of them if I forgot they existed, huh? The one amalgam band, he's a seven mana all type minion with six, six stats. He's gonna gain a random bonus effect for each minion type you've played this game. Is charge a bonus effect? This is very non-specific. If Menagerie can play enough minions that this is guaranteed hitting charge, I, that's pretty good, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it actually cannot hit charge. It can only hit rush. That just seems like the way the card would be designed to me. In which case, yeah, it's fine. If it could get like charge and lifesteal and divine shield and reborn and all that, that'd be a hell of a card. But considering it's not going to be hitting your opponent in the face and it's just a really powerful defensive card at seven mana, yeah, it's fine. It could be a lot worse. Like, there's not a reason to play Menagerie. If you're playing Menagerie, you may as well run this. But why were you playing Menagerie? What are you doing? Stop playing Warrior. Get out of there, kid. The one Amalgam Band is sad, and it reminds me of the saddest thing in this game. Warriors. 
Concert promo drakes an 8 mana 8 8 dragon and it has finale so if you spend all your mana which you can always do except on turn 9 you can always make this happen because of hero powers unless you're a demon hunter don't play late game control dragon demon hunter I don't think I need to tell you that so you can always play this as an 8 8 that destroys an enemy minion thankfully it has tradable because that is nowhere near good enough 8 mana 8 8 destroy a minion is not good it does have the dragon tag which you will need a card with that in your hand just to enable stuff like Draken and Operative and Amber Whelp. But unfortunately, Kazaku-san is rotating. And what we're getting instead is Assassinate Dragon. So, um, <laughs> like, control Dragon decks are kind of just dead until they get a real dragon to care about. Because if your endgame payoff card is Assassinate attached to a War Golem, you are, like, eight years too late. That is not a card that is worth building your deck around in modern Hearthstone. It is fine. You can build a dragon deck right now with these guys in it, and it's not terrible. But as we've said so many times today, fine, even good, is nowhere near enough. And this is good, but it's not great. It's not enough to play dragons, and there aren't good enough dragons to justify going dragon if this is what we're looking at for our top end of this expansion. The Mishmash Mosher, an 8 mana undead with 3 attack, 10 health, rush. After it attacks, it gains 1 attack and attacks a random enemy minion. So it just goes and goes and goes until they're either all dead or he's dead. No thanks? What, what do I need to say about this? It's not good. It's not good at killing big minions, which is what you need an 8 mana removal tool to do. As a board clear, it's 8 mana. It's much too late. As an undead payoff card, if you're like trying to cheat this out with Stitched Behemoth, it's a 310. It's not a good enough card. Yeah, there's nothing I like about this card. Yeah, I've got nothing good to say about this. It might be good in Arena. And lastly, we have the Amplified Elec. And this is a 10 mana 612 beast with Taunt, Death Rattle, deal 3 damage to all enemies. Now, I'm grateful that this is not a 9 mana card because that would actually be a nerf to Jungle Jammer, the new Hunter weapon. Because right now, if you somehow get that bad boy to 9, the only 9 mana beast to summon is King Crush. Now, unfortunately for Amplified Elec, if it got printed at 8 mana, it might not be good enough. It's still pretty soft. I think Hunter might actually experiment with this card because they have big dreams to cheat it out now. And I know 5 mana do nothing isn't good, on turn 7 you'll get a 612 taunt with the death rattle hellfire, that's kind of alright. Look, big hunter's in a bad spot and they need to try stuff like this. It's not going to be good enough. This is a card that didn't need to exist. It's cute, I like that it exists. Maybe it costs 10 mana because it's actually a 6 mana card, but it has 2 stereo totems on either side. So you have to spend the 4 extra mana for them even though you don't get them. Admittedly, a 612 taunt for 6 would be a little bit too much. It needed the extra cost. It's not a good card. I'm gonna be so sad when I lose to Big Hunter, who <laughs> gets this off of Big Dreams and I just can't get through it. But it's not gonna be a good card. Bad cards win games. It happens. Everyone who played in Classic lost to Inner Fire Priest in that deck was hot garbage. I wish this had been printed well. I wish this were like an 8 mana minion with lower stats to compensate for it so that you could actually maybe make a hunter deck that had a taunt beast that worked, but as it stands, this card isn't playable, and without good beasts that have taunt or other methods of stabilization, big hunter probably isn't playable. And that's going to be it for all of the neutral minions in the Festival of Legends, but there are still a few more minions to talk about because the core set is rotating. So first, let's talk about what's leaving over here on the left. We're losing the Explorers, most notably we're losing Reno Jackson, which never really came to fruition, there wasn't a lot of Highlander support in the last year. And more importantly, Brand Ronsbeard is out of here, glad to see him leave. And honestly, aside from those two, we're not really seeing much else leave that was seeing any play. Acidic Swampus is being replaced with Tradable Weapon Destruction, Violet Teacher is leaving just in time for Token Druid to throw up its hands and say, what am I supposed to do now? Because everything else Token Druid was already doing is gone too. Mixtures and Mixtures and Murdoch Tiny Fin are leaving. We have a new cute mascot. We have a new one drop for anti aggro. So, really, every card that's leaving is, except for Brand Bronzebeard, not seeing play right now and also usually not very good. Now, coming over to the new stuff, there are a lot of buffs over here. One of those notable ones being Four Mana Black Knight. I won't be going over all of them, just the ones that immediately strike me as important. First, we have Rag, Dr. Boom, Zilix, and Black Knight as our new legendaries. I don't think Rag's gonna see any play. 
Now, Dr. Boom's really funny to me. Everyone's saying, the game's gotten a lot faster. I don't think Dr. Boom's a scene you play. It's turn side then do nothing. I kind of agree with that, but that's exactly what we all said the first time we were wrong about him and he showed up and he defined the meta. <laughs> like it's the exact same argument we made back then and I'm getting deja vu. And the meta is slowing down. A lot of the really fast combo decks are losing speed. Some really strong aggro minions are shuffling out or cycling out rather. I think Dr. Boom's gonna see play. Not nearly as much as he did in the past. He won't be meta defining, but he's gonna see experimentation and there will be at least one competitive deck list this year in tier one or tier two that everyone agrees should run Dr. Boom. I, I can feel confident in that. He's not too slow. He will see play. I don't think he'll be dominant. I do think the game has gotten fast enough that turn seven, like you play Dr. Boom and they fall straight at your face and you're like, oh shit. Right, Death Knight's in the game now. I do think that alone holds Dr. Boom down so much that maybe Frost Knight being in tier one just makes him unplayable, actually. I think he will see play, despite Frost Boom's Fury really, really messing him up, but he's nowhere near what he once was. Zilliax will see play. Magnetic, Divine Shield, Taunt, Life, Steel, Rush, just throw all of the keywords on it. The big ones being five mana removal that heals you for six most of the time. It's just a thing you can slot into almost any control deck, even a mid-range deck. And if you're playing a mech deck, then he is incredible. Now, Black Knight as a 4-4 battle cry destroy a taunt is... Like, I honestly just want to put that in all my decks and see how many taunts there really are. Like, if that's just going off every other game, I think it's substantially improving my win rate in basically every matchup. And let's be real, I'm expecting to get Tempo Dirty Rats on turn 2 a lot in the first couple weeks of this expansion before everyone, myself included, remembers how to play Dirty Rat properly. And providing the Dirty Rat doesn't hit my Black Knight, Black Knighting the Dirty Rat's fine. Every, like, there's gonna be a lot of Dirty Rats around to Black Knight, if I'm allowed to. There's gonna be a lot of Zilliacs around. I'm sure there are other top minions in the game whose names escape me at the minute. If Taunt ever becomes, like, remotely prevalent, the Black Knight will see a lot of play. It's a very, very strong card. It just needs to actually have targets. And I'm not really sure it does right now. Next up, we have Dirty Rat, which will see play. 2 mana, 2 6 taunt. Wonderful card for both anti aggro and anti combo. He has Battle Cry, your opponent summons a random minion from their hand. This can break Battle Cry, so this can rip out combo pieces that they can't put back and just brick their deck. Against aggro decks, it very likely pulls something that isn't that big in the first place that Dirty Rat handles. You can also kill yourself. You can tempo Dirty Rat against, like, a Malganus deck, and they're like, oh, all right, I'm the aggro now, and they just beat you to death. So you need to figure out how to play the game at a high level to make good use of Dirty Rat, but like he's a very good card. There's gonna be a lot of Dirty Rat seeing play. I'm gonna skip over to Colt Neophyte. Colt Neophyte's gonna see a lot of play. A lot of decks don't have great curves right now. Just slap a Colt Neophyte in that bad boy. You need more two drops? Just slap a Colt Neophyte in there. Frost Death Knight, I'm looking at you. You have a single two drop minion? Here's a second one. That's gonna be good for the deck. So yeah, Colt Neophyte's gonna be everywhere at this expansion. Once we get more two drops later in the year, it might fall off, but it's a very, very good card. It may just stick around and be omnipresent the whole time. Eater of Secrets is our new anti-secret tech. Don't really care. Didn't see play before. With ETC, I guess it is more playable, but also I'm going to play ETC to get my Eater of Secrets and ETC is gonna get objectioned. Not that it matters, because Eater of Secrets would get objectioned instead, which like, yeah, technically he got rid of it, but not really. Now, I'm gonna go over all the magnetic cards in a bunch. War Gear is, um, Threatening a whole lot of phase damage. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe War Gear's actually just playable. I'm not putting it in my mech decks currently, but maybe I should be. Cause like that is potentially like if a minion sticks and you have five mana, just six straight to the dead. That's a lot of damage. However, the more generally good tempo minions are stuff like Replicating Menace, which has been buffed to two health. It's gonna give you three two death rattle summon three one ones. That's just a good boost of damage to the face and a little bit of stickiness for your board. We have Bronze Gatekeeper, which is a 3-mana 2-5 taunt. I was saying earlier in the video at some point that 2-5 is just, like, actually a good stat line. 2-5 taunt is actually solid. Stacking this on top of any mech in the early game results in a very strong minion that your opponent cannot get through. So that's just an incredible card. And in conjunction with a new 1-drop mech that we talked about much earlier and Click Clocker, I think the mech package is actually there. I think Mech Mage in particular, and actually only Mech Mage, is really, really in a good spot, and I expect Mech Mage to do quite well. Armor Avengers here, it's not really going to change the meta, because it just used to be named Mistress of Mixers, they just swapped them out, so they do the same thing, nothing changes. Rod and Apple Bomb is a 5 mana 4 or 5 undead that... <laughs> like, I'm reading it like I'm seeing it for the first time, because I basically am. Was I even here during this expansion? It looks like a Witchwood card, so no, I wasn't. 
Uh, it doesn't look like the thing that's going to see a lot of play, though. It's all right. It's no sludge belcher, but it's all right. We have a silence effect. We have a weapon destruction effect. They're both tradable. They're both worth putting in decks if those things are relevant in the meta. Hitch Clan, Thug, and Dread Corsair are back, and they're kind of scary pirate cards. But I tinker with the pirate rogue deck for a while. It doesn't have as much burn as I would like. I wasn't using all of the new poison adjacent effects they got. I think there can definitely be a viable pirate deck. These guys are quite scary. And if there is one, it's probably going to be rogue. But right now, even though they're definitely competitively viable cards, I'm not sure if they fit into a good enough deck. I look forward to getting steamrolled by Pirate Rogue and being like, wow, how did I not put this together myself? Because these are very scary cards. And lastly, we have Snow Flipper Penguin. They're our new cute zero cost card, Rip in Peace Wisp. We have Tour Guide, which has always seen play in Warlock decks, but outside of that, I'm not sure how common it's been. It's good enough. Like, it's perfectly a fine card. We have Mermy, which might see play in any undead decks, in particular in Death Knight decks, because this is two corpses with the price of one for a Death Knight, and one drops are always appreciated in an aggressive deck, like, you know, almost all of the Death Knights are. Blood's not a real class, don't lie to me. And Glacial Shard's in the game, that's what I had to say about him. I think the core set rotation for neutral minions is incredibly impactful. This is a huge amount of meaningful change. We've also basically just removed nothing but garbage, so all of this stuff is just incredible compared to what we used to have. Unlike the Festival of Legends neutral minions, I think these are going to have a huge impact on the meta. In particular, at some point during the year, there will be a minute that uses these cards. These one drops will see play. These tradable cards will see play if they're meta appropriate. The magnetic top minions push mech mage into viability. Cult neophyte will be everywhere. Dirty rat will be everywhere. Zillix will be everywhere. Dr. Boom will see a little bit of play probably. And if there are targets for it, the Black Knight will be everywhere. I don't think there are though. So while I'm not thrilled about the neutral minions in Festival of Legends, on the whole, I am thrilled about Festival of Legends. The neutral minions are soft, and the warrior cards are really soft, but the core set rotation is fantastic, and in most classes are really interesting sets of cards that I'm super hyped to try out. On the whole, this is the most invested in Hearthstone I've been in a long time, and I'm really hyped about rotation. I don't know what I'll be playing first, because I record this on April 1st, so I have like 10 days to get hype and change my mind and see what other people are doing and adapt that and adjust it and see everything else. And then on top of that, there's going to be the theory craft day where I get to watch a bunch of streamers and see what they're doing and if that impacts my perceptions of things. Really looking forward to the expansion dropping and I'll see you with more content once it does. I've been Rather Incoherent. If you've enjoyed hearing me talk about the neutral stuff in the upcoming rotation, then please do leave a like, comment, subscribe. All that stuff really does help the channel grow and I greatly appreciate it.